What's going on there folks? A good Friday evening, Friday the 13th here, 2022. It's been one heck of a Friday the 13th, let me tell you. Our power just came on here after being without power for quite a few hours today. I'm not for sure what happened, but uh, we do have power back on. I am here with my beautiful co-host, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? And uh, we're going to do a little update a video tonight. Uh, a little bit of activity to talk about. See that little spike there on the Petrolia station just now uh, exiting the, um, the graphs there. But there was a little spike of an earthquake showing up there. Not for sure how big it is, but uh, definitely not showing up on the, uh, on the Earthquake 3D globe for some reason. So, All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out the latest data here. Uh, from the USG, uh, USGS map and kind of scramble brain today. No power. But luckily, I have, you know, generators and whatnot and solar lights and candles. And it's so weird because about the time we get everything all set up for the night, uh, the power comes back on. So we weren't expecting power back until about 3 a.m. So, all right, a little bit of noticeable earthquake activity here around the Ridgecrest area, obviously. Uh, picking up pretty tremendously and it's in an area that does have a lot of historical volcanic activity the coastal volcanic range up here we're seeing a separate swarm individualized here about 12 earthquakes or so today uh, all microquakes but in the reason uh, in the region of the coastal volcanic field uh, also a couple different swarms here uh, to the south in a little unnamed area around the coastal junction area uh, a couple small microquakes here around this uh, mountainous area and then a little bit further down south, Ridgecrest area is really lighting up here. Uh, and it's all over the place. It's not specifically in a straight line. If you recall, uh, the 2019 earthquakes here, um, July 4th and July 5th, right? We've seen that uh, fracture out here along the uh, specific fault systems. I believe it was the Airport Lake Fault that ruptured and produced that uh, series of earthquakes. But this activity kind of stretching oddly around Ridgecrest down towards the Gar Garlock Fault structure, which is which is a little odd. Uh, we did see a three-pointer kick up here today, a 3.2 just to the northeast of Ridgecrest, uh, and also a 2.8. I'm sure quite a few folks did report filling that, uh, specifically localized around Ridgecrest. Um, looks like a, a very light response there on the earthquake area or at least on the earthquake reports. I was down there. Uh, when did I go down there? Was it earlier this year or last year? I think it was last year. Last year, year around this time. And, uh, man, just a, a lot of desert down there. Not my type of community. And uh, not the friendliest people. I don't know what's going on down there, but uh, I don't know if I'll ever go back down to the Southern California area <laughs> following that trip. Uh, it was the Salton Sea trip, right? You went to the... Yeah, you went down the Salton Sea and then... Um I don't think you went over. You try. I think you tried to go down to Ridgecrest. I was in Ridgecrest. Where, oh, you were. You yeah. Were. That was that trip. Yeah. That so, was that was 2021. I okay. Believe. But yeah, I, I, actually, I went down there twice. Remember, there was the uh, the Salton Sea area, and then I went down there for the uh, Long Valley Super Volcano trip. So yeah. I made two separate trips down there. I don't remember which one I, I visited Ridgecrest uh, Ridgecrest on, but not my type of community. Just a little on the. Uh, odd side out there in the desert but uh, we're watching some movement outside of Ridgecrest and uh, stretching towards the Garlock Fault structure and uh, a little bit of activity down in the southern part of the state as well looks like some movement off of the Elsinore Fault System south of Marietta 3.5 that one was at the Palomar Observatory earlier this morning uh, we have not seen any significant swarming kicking up here in fact that looks like the only earthquake that did occur here around the Palomar Mountain Observatory. Not for sure what's going on out there, but they've seen a series of swarms over the past few months. And it's a little odd. All right, uh, working our way up north. Uh, definitely notice a large, uh, kind of a broader area of earthquake uptick throughout Nevada. Uh, stretching up from the Ridgecrest area today. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano looks, uh, looks like there's a couple small quakes around the area. But uh, mostly microquakes, the majority of the Nevada quake, all microquakes as well, but it is scattered out and about north of Las Vegas to around the Tonopah area. Uh, so a little bit of something going on out there in the plate world, in the uh, fault systems. Just not for sure exactly what it's leading to, but it's obviously a sign of uh, pressure increases out here along the western coast. Uh, what else we got here? Bay Area looks pretty quiet. 
Uh, aside from one earthquake here, just off of the, uh, what's this town? There's Vallejo, Napa, Fairfield, Martinez area, 2.1 uh, showing up there on the map. Pretty shallow earthquake, 2.4 kilometers. And of course, the uh, uh, activity around the ridge, or the uh, Cobb Mountain region, still pretty active today. Nothing within the last hour or so. Uh, movement up into Washington. Some activity kicking up here. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map tonight with the uh, latest trimmer activity. It looks like, wow, pretty large uptick here along the uh, west coast. And look at that. It's not in one specific area. It's Just pretty much... like spread out there. Well, this almost covers the entire subduction zone. Right. you got the northern, you got the central, and the southern. southern. And it's a lot at the southern bottom. Well, yeah, it was like this last night, too, in the southern part. Uh, not 229 epicenters, but that's a pretty good number of uh, trimmers going on here along the Cascadia. Again, this covers pretty much the entire length of the Cascadia subduction zone. Yesterday's activity was mainly confined here uh, to the northern California area. We've seen about uh, 100 and something, 117 epicenters here. So pretty large uptick, but uh, now we're looking at, and this is kind of what worries me, is when you got the whole subduction zone here showing trimmer activity along the whole interface here of the area of this region. Not just the north, not just the center, not just the south, but the entire area. So that's something we got to watch uh, pretty closely there along the Cascadia. Uh, again, we did see some movement on the Petrolia station, a little earthquake, but as you can see, nada. Nothing showing up here from the USGS. I'm not for sure how big it was, but uh, it was definitely a signature of an earthquake. And uh, nothing showing up there from the USGS folks. Go ahead and check out the volcanoes here along the Pacific Northwest, Mount St. Helens. And it uh, looks like they've thrown in a couple earthquakes here and there. There we go. We'll, we'll feed them a couple bones and, and tell them that, uh, you know, we're, we're reporting the data. Let's go ahead and check the live data, or at least the recorded data. And uh, this is Mount St. Helens here. Uh, this is the amplified chart uh, you can see the squiggly lines are a little bit more broader and more visible but it's showing the microquake activity pretty significantly uh, over the last couple of hours uh, this is definitely it looks like it's a little bit stronger than what it was this morning uh, so yeah definitely a good handful of earthquakes uh, in the microquake range once again notice the small lines here or, or the uh, signature of the lines are much smaller so the amplification of the seismograph readings are not as intense but if you think about it all these little bitty specks right here are indeed microquakes as well similar to what we're seeing on this chart here with a little bit more well-defined uh, prominent feature here showing those earthquakes in the area uh let's see what else we got uh, throughout the region here it looks like uh, things kind of calming down throughout the southern plains over there around oklahoma some movement earlier this morning here for the friday the 13th uh, beautiful day. <laughs> still not over yet. We still got a couple hours here along the west coast. Uh, a couple twos and threes kicking up there in western Texas. New Madrid zone. Seen one earthquake here. Again, this is from way earlier this morning at 1.2. No subsequent activity there in that region. Eastern part of the board or the seaboard looks pretty quiet. One earthquake way up here. I'm really surprised that the USGS is showing this because most of the time they don't show anything that happens in Canada. But uh, 4.1 popping up here and the uh, uh, Quebec area looks like of Canada. I want to check out the Earthquakes Canada map here real quick and see what we got uh, uh, from those folks. See if they're reporting the uh, same magnitude. There's, well, look at that. Wow. And that's the latest earthquake as well. 4.1 near the, uh, what's this? I'll let you be the announcer. Uh, Nunavik. Nunavik mine? mine. Nunavik. Is that right? Nunavik mine. So Maybe. Nunavik mine? Okay. Cute. Uh, we'll keep it simple. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't hang us. <laughs> Just, uh, we're trying. If, if we pronounced it wrong, definitely correct us. I have no problem with the uh, uh, constructive criticism and, and uh, correctiveness. So 4.1 showing up there on the USGS and also the Earthquakes Canada map. A little bit of activity off the shore or off the coast here of the Vancouver Island ranges there. Uh, into the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, it looks like. But uh, overall, the big story, kind of this earthquake up here. Uh, not for sure exactly. Uh, well, we got 18 kilometer depth for that earthquake. 
Not for sure about the population density up here, but I'm sure there's a few uh, communities up there in the beautiful, much colder environment. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Alaska showing some activity kicking up as well. Uh, noticing a little cluster of earthquake activity here around the Fox Islands and uh, some movement north of Anchorage, it looks like, around the uh, Castle Mountain Fault. A couple small microquakes there outside of the Anchorage area. And uh, things kind of calming down here. And I've noticed that earlier this morning. We really haven't seen uh, an uptick in earthquake activity on the western part of the Pacific Plate. It's all been uh, kind of quiet. Uh, Japan had this one earthquake here this morning, uh, 4.6 into the Japan Trench, and a little activity here in the Papua New Guinea region. Early, uh, that was earlier, uh, or yeah, earlier this evening. It looks like a 5.1, and some deeper movement around the Fiji Islands area. But uh, man, not a not a whole lot of noticeable earthquake activity here along the Western Pacific. It's all been uh, seems like it's kind of wanting to back build here against the North American Plate from the east. Uh, looks like low activity through the China region and the Afghanistan area where they've seen a 4.3 uh, earlier this afternoon. Some movement around Greece as well with a couple fours. But uh, Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Puerto Rico area still seeing some movement uh, outside of the Puerto Rico region. North of the British Virgin Islands area with a couple fours and some threes. Uh, one of those earthquakes here pretty deep around the upper Hell's Gate region. Earthquake in that area on Friday the 13th, right? Pretty deep, 105 kilometer deep earthquake. That one was from earlier, way earlier this morning's time frame. So in South America, one lonesome earthquake here above the 4.0 threshold around Argentina. Again, deeper movement, 216 kilometers for that earthquake. Yellowstone National Park, uh, see what we got going on here in the area. Aside from that earthquake here along the eastern section of the Yellowstone region, we haven't seen any uh, further movement. No earthquake activity to report here on the raw data. Uh, this is a live, or at least a recorded, live seismograph stations. And uh, just out one earthquake here around Parker Peak. Uh, I don't believe Yellowstone, has, or at least the USGS, has issued any uh, notification on that quake. Not a zip zero. I guess it's got to be above the 4.0 threshold for them to take notice. Uh, let's see, we checked out Tremor. Let's go ahead and check out the solar weather department here uh, tonight, uh, along with the solar flares, which are kind of ramping up. Still looking pretty uh, pretty active here. Look at all these new developments coming up around the bend. This is a massive sunspot here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of waiting to see what this is going to look like. It covers a broad area uh, just outside of 3011 there I see that. Uh, on the eastern limb. 3007 has grown significantly uh, since this morning's time frame. I'm not even joking. It wasn't that big this morning. Uh, the sunspot is getting ginormous. But the polarities right now, looking at the polarities, uh, not a whole lot of intermixing there. We want to see these blues and red uh, almost right next to it, next to each other. So we need to see, um, yeah, we definitely need to see about half of this distance or closer, uh, at least with one of these uh uh, polarities to create an arc or a nice significant flare but right now it's it's growing stage but uh you never know got to keep an eye on it pretty closely and these other ones that are coming up around the bend here in the coming days could provide us with some further uh significant solar flaring right now 99 percent chance of a sea flare of course we are in the sea flare uh, territory and m flare stance at about 45 percent uh 45 percent chance 10 percent chance for the x flare and um, KP indexes will be amping up here in the coming nights due to a facing earth side facing coronal hole. Got a couple of them here, north side, and uh, another one that will be facing us here directly in the coming days. So we should see some amplification with the auroras at the higher and possibly the mid latitude. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, what else we got here? I didn't check Hawaii. Let's go over here to the Big Island, see what we got going on. Kind of skip that, and that's kind of an important important part of the update. Yes. Uh, right now, it looks about the same. couple earthquakes here around Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa, right? Mauna Loa. Is it Mauna? Yeah. Or is it Mona? It's not Mona. Or Mauna. It's Mau Mauna Loa. Mm -hmm. I got corrected. Well, 
We love it's being, not Mauna Loa. We definitely love being corrected because we want to Mauna say Loa. Right. And sometimes I say Mauna Loa really quickly, but uh, yeah, Mauna Loa, that's, I, I guess that's not the correct pronunciation, but uh, it's all good. Please correct us. Yes. I'm not going to sit here and we, block you. We, oh, we, look at this guy. He corrected me. Block. Yeah. No, that doesn't we, happen. We want to say it correctly. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I do want to. Missy Mimi's is much better at a uh, little bit pronunciation, so I'd like to see her say... Let's pick out a name tonight, okay? Oh, goodness. Come on, here we go. Giving me... Right here. Kiel... What's this? Right here where the hand, where the arrow is. Kialakikua. Say it again. Kialakikua. How'd she do, folks? Was that the correct pronunciation? I know we have quite a few viewers on the big island out there, <laughs> so let us know. But don't slaughter her. Uh, she did it probably much better than I probably would, so... <laughs> <laughs> Man, I should have had you say it first. No, 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 no. I'd have to end the stream immediately and never be seen again. No. <laughs> so, a little activity out there on the big island, but uh, no significant changes going on here. Uh, let's see what else we got here for... Um, I think that's about it. We are going to do a quick question and answer. Uh, Missy Mimi's looks like she's on the stream. Who donated what? Still what? in SoCal 42. Still in SoCal. I, thank you I for your donation. Her, thank you very much for the donation. $5 donation here um, on the channel. We appreciate it 100%. Um, and we're, we're just kind of doing a little quick question and answer show. So if you have anything, maybe a concern... Uh, or questions about anything about what's going on here. We're going to try to help you out. Look at that earthquake way up here on top of the globe. I can't even click on it. Look way up here. Okay. I didn't even see that way up on the Arctic Ocean. Again. See that? I wonder. Okay, oh, it's a 4.1. In France, Joseph Land. Is that Joseph or Joseph? Joseph. Joseph Land. Sounds like a land I'd love to be at. Franz, it's way far away. Franz. Joseph Land. That's pretty neat. It is. It's way, way That's, up there. It's legitly off the flat Earth map. <laughs> <laughs> right at the edge of the Earth, man. I'm right? not for sure what's going on it's there, but <laughs> the ice is melting around the uh, flat scale. <laughs> so 4.1 up there at about 10 kilometers. I know there's earthquakes occurring all across the Antarctic and uh, north of us, but, but you got to so remember. Important. Well, it's the yeah. thing is they're very limited on seismograph stations. I mean, if you look at, for example, I want to show you guys real quick while we're waiting on some questions. Um, here in the States, okay, we got some active volcanoes, or at least potentially active volcanoes. Mount Hood's a pretty well-covered um, area for GPS stations and also seismograph stations. But if you check out Mount Rainier, we got one or two scattered out and about away from the summit. Now, most of the earthquake activity is up here at the summit, so I don't understand why they're not capable of producing... Uh, you know, a little seismo seismograph station up there at the summit to monitor uh, the activity. And there's some other stations out here of uh, volcanoes that only have one that, that could be inoperational. So, um, you know, and this is here in the States. So you look at the, uh, look at Three Sisters around the volcanoes. The only stations they have are quite a few miles away to the southwest and to the southeast. So they, they definitely need some better, um, they need they need to put into operation more seismograph stations. So how that plays with the lack of activity up north, up into the other uh, areas that don't see any activity, such as Antarctica, Greenland area, is because they're not, they don't have those stations, uh, they don't have any stations up there to cover it. Yeah. I'm sure there's some, but man, there's not a whole lot. So uh, we definitely need uh, a lot more coverage in the seismograph department there, US, USGS. So, What do we got? Anything going on here, folks? Uh, I know I read your comments on the stinging nettle. It's a pain in the butt. Trust me. And it burns. And it burns <laughs> Missy Mimi's pretty bad. She breaks out. Uh, I know there's benefits. I've been poked by it. It does, uh, I think it amplifies your serotonin. Mm -hmm. And uh, helps with uh, arthritis. arthritis and it whatnot. It actually has like a um, a numbing sensation around after after it stops stinging. Yeah, but anyone can say that it goes along with being stung by bees multiple times. <laughs> right. It helps your arthritis. Okay. Well, first, um, I don't have arthritis, so it's not. I'm not going to pull that out of the ground and start, you know, drinking tea. 
So. But uh, yeah, I know it definitely does have some benefits, health benefits, but I'm not to that point yet. Yeah, of, they're, uh, they're mean to us. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a little mean to our garden that we're trying to get going here. Uh, still in SoCal 42 says, what do you guys think about the eclipse coming between the sun, earth, and the moon? Is that this weekend that, that you're talking about? I, I believe that might be the one. Yeah, because there is a total lunar eclipse coming up. I'm kind of tempted to live stream it um, Sunday night. It's pretty cool, right? But it, unfortunately, it's going to be low, at least here on the West Coast, going to be low on the horizon. Uh, but I do have a pretty good view of the east and the western sky, so I'm hoping we'll be able to see that coming up for the moonrise. But uh, I'm pretty excited. We're going to be watching it. I'll definitely take photos. Uh, whether it plays a part in uh, producing earthquakes and whatnot, I, I think so, right? I think it does have a little part in uh, possibly plate dynamics and the uh, magnetic field and whatnot. Earth vibrates at a certain frequency, and when you have certain lineups with the planets, the sun, and the moon, I honestly do think it does play a part uh, in what goes on here on the Earth. So, But we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm hoping I'd love to live stream it, but um, i got to figure out a way to hook up my uh, my Zoom camera to the uh, to a live stream. I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll see, though. If not, I will definitely get uh, some pictures of it because uh, me and Miss and Mimi's are pretty big into that type of stuff. Oh, yes. And we might even go out tonight and get a shot, a couple shots of the moon tonight. Because it is kind of in that. Uh, it's in the um, wa the waxing uh, gibbous phase right now, so it's it's kind of. Uh, you can see a, you can probably see some, some of the craters, right? Yep, you can see from some the of shadows, the and it's got it's got some really good dynamics for picks right now. So yeah, we'll probably go out here and uh, get a get a couple shots of that. We'll see see how it goes. Plus, we're we're kind of barbecuing. We had planned on cooking dinner, regardless of the power coming on or not. It was going to be a barbecue, so uh, barbecuing up some tri-tip tonight with some apple wood chips. A little bit different tonight, but it uh, should come out pretty good. What else we got, guys? Someone said, anyone know what he said? How will this affect his? Um, I think, Let me see. Like, are you talking? Anyone know what he said? How will this affect us, I'm guessing. Are you guys? I, I'm guessing uh, Va Vasquez is talking about the uh, eclipse this weekend. Like I said, there's, there's, I believe there's a, a connection and uh, an effect here on Earth when we're interacting with the eclipses, whether it's a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse. I believe there's a, a strong connection onto what goes on here on Earth. But uh, you know, a lot of times there's been. Uh, uh, total lunar eclipses and not a not a peep or a squeak of an earthquake. So, but it, it just it uh, I believe it does have an effect. How much of an effect? I guess we'll see. It's Friday the thirteenth. I mean, I was out without power for the majority of the day. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> it was <it's>, no fun. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. I spent the majority of my time looking for a certain cord, <laughs> certain cord for the uh, generator. <laughs> But uh, it's all good. Once we once we were basically set up, set it up, yeah, it came on. It came on. <laughs> I knew it would too, and I mentioned it to Miss Mimi. I was like, "Watch, as soon as everything's all set up, uh, it, it's going to come back on." So, it, sure and it, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we got, guys. Any more questions? Drop them in the comments. If not, we are probably going to call it. Probably going to call it National Data Buoy Center. There's, I don't believe there's any. Stuff in event mode out here. Everything looks calm, cool, collective, and uh, some in operation. I uh, still got this buoy out here not doing a whole lot. Uh, still haven't heard from them. No, I haven't. No emails or nothing from them. So. Hmm. But uh, I don't know. Got to remember that's way out there in the middle of the ocean. So, uh, you know, who knows if anyone wants to really even mess with that. You know, it's, <laughs> they probably don't want to. What else we got, guys? Uh, let's see. By the way, guys, make sure you like this video. Um, the YouTube algorithms have been kind of shady recently in far as putting out notifications and um, whatnot to the viewers. So if you give the live thumb or the uh, live stream and the update video a thumbs up, that will help us out quite a bit in the YouTube algorithms. They've been kind of a uh, little on the sketchy side recently. Yes, and definitely share it. We want to get this information out 
to yeah, share, but like is the big but thing. Like is definitely the big thing. Believe it or not, liking the video at the moment is just about as same as making a donation to the video. I mean, donations do help out the channel, us, and we do appreciate it. And YouTube sees that as viewers, viewers um, liking the content that they see. But also at the same time, the thumbs up, the like button definitely helps out the YouTube algorithm kick into gear and uh, provide the, uh, um, the notification system and whatnot when it comes to uh, putting out this video. I don't know why they've been kind of skimpy recently, but uh, I've had quite a few folks tell me, I, I haven't got your video. You know, I had to go to your channel to get it. And so make sure you guys like this live stream. It's just a click of a button and that helps us out 100% folks. And then make sure you also subscribe. Subscribe yeah, to the subscribe. channel if you are not subscribed already. And hit the notification bell to all so you never miss an update. If for some reason you don't catch us on the live stream, we will upload the video after. And you will be notified. So And make sure to like it as well because it does, it, like he said, it ups it ups the algorithm. So you guys, we can keep coming to you. What else we got, guys? Um... Some, um, L. Jolice asked, was there really an earthquake in San Diego? San Diego? Um, I mean, there is all there is a little earthquake down there. See that? Just yeah. outside. But that was the Palomar the Mountain. Yeah, the Palomar Observatory. Yeah. Specifically San Diego? Nothing really showing up on the map. And I don't think there was anything large in the last seven days that I know of. Yeah, within that like, area. Within there. Yeah, see, it's like that's it that's Just, seven days 2.5 and yeah. above so nothing, i haven't heard anything and there's major. there's quite a few viewers down there in southern california and uh i think they definitely would have let me known so not for sure definitely uh um nothing being reported someone asking about tau volcano and how it's the tau volcano like is it how's it how is it as far as uh advisory let's see what we got here where did my, uh, is this it? Hold on a second, folks. Let's check out Tao and see what's, is that the correct pronunciation there? I believe so. In the so. Philippines? So it's restless currently. I mean, uh, at least according to this update, which means two out of five. Uh, last update was April 14th, so it doesn't look like any significant Uptick. activity has happened. Um... The eruptive stages of volcanic eruptions there's pretty uh wow look at that it's definitely been uh, pretty active throughout historical times uh looks like 2020 the most explosive one uh, most recent one that is but uh far as any specific updates go it looks like uh it says latest satellite imagery here 513 2020 see if yeah. i can access it looks like a little bit of uh oh, 2022 2022 sorry how did i get back to i'm trying we to, went back in time back in time right <laughs> it's been it's friday the 13th <laughs> i can't get that thing to load for whatever reason here from the uh from the area Yes, they're saying that it's at level 3 as of 3 p.m., but it's it's showing only a 2. Yeah, we're still, at least from these folks, so maybe yeah. they will update it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, right now they're only showing latest news, at least from the Volcano Discovery site. Yeah. Uh, shows it still at 2, but uh, we'll definitely watch that pretty closely. I can't get these satellite image, uh, images to load. But uh, uh, I'm not going to go through all this. These guys, let's see here. Landsat 8. Definitely looks like something lighting up out there. But uh, we'll check on that and definitely provide a, a further update. And um, yeah, I guess they haven't really updated this yet. So. Uh, Lord Andrew says, do we have any incoming solar flares? Uh, solar flare missed. activity right now uh, is kind of at the minimal stage. We're kind of in low C class right now. But there is the possibility of some flares kicking up here. Only a 45% chance of M-flare. And we already chatted about uh, the dynamics of the sunspots. 
Right now they're massive and huge. 3007 is probably the only culprit uh, in terms of uh, producing a uh, intermixing here of the polarity of the fields, creating that flare. But even then again, uh, it's kind of broad. It's, it doesn't have that sparky connection that you look for. Uh, but 3011 and west or eastward on this eastward eastern side of the sun uh, could be a possible threat here in the coming days as it rotates. Let's see. Oh, Cindy says hi. Hi, Cindy. Cindy, thanks for checking in. Thanks for checking in. Hopefully, we don't have any more weird power outages. I mean, yeah. last night we lost the stream because. Um, our ISP was working on some lines or some technical data, so we lost it for like three hours at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Finally got it back up, and then all of a sudden the power goes down. You know, and that, I, I still don't know what caused it, but it was a good 150, 160 people here around where I live uh, without power, so. Um... I um I say I uh, wants to know is Ridgecrest on our watch Ow. list? Ooh. Just hit my elbow. <laughs> oh. It's all good. Like is Ridgecrest on a watch list as far as like earthquake watch? I would definitely say it is right now. Uh, the reason being is because of the increase in activity here, uh, not only throughout uh, recent but over the last 24 hours, including that swarm. So definitely, I would watch the Ridgecrest area. Because uh, uh, he says he lives. Let's see. He says he's in Ridge. He lives in Ridgecrest. Okay. He says, yeah, with this uptick right here, I mean, it's pretty noticeable increase, and it's got some weird dynamics here, stretching down towards the Garlock Fault. Um, yeah, there's something uh, something brewing down here, but it's very localized here, mostly to the uh, Ridgecrest area and part of Nevada. It looks like this whole area right here under uh, quite a bit of strain. Lord Andrew said, thanks for answering your question. The, you the are welcome. What is it? What's oh, it the he, uh, Lord Andrew. He was the one who asked about the solar flares. Lord Andrew, thank you. So All right, we're going to back out of here, guys. We're not going to make this too long of an update. Yep. Uh, we're past 30 minutes, so we're going to bounce out of here. Uh, but live stream is up and running. Everything uh, looks pretty solid right now. 3.7, latest quake there onto the South America continent. It looks like the... Uh, Chili Trench there. And uh, if you missed our update, uh, of course, you can watch, re rewind it here on the live stream. Or you can watch the update itself once it's posted here to the channel. So uh, we're going to bounce out of here. Go check our tri-tip. Make sure we're not looking at any jerky uh, <laughs> for tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Burnt tri-tip. Oh, well, it's fine. Yeah, yum. Yummy. All right, guys. Have a good night. Please stay safe out there. And make sure you like thumbs up this video that's pretty important right now with the youtube algorithms and um we will chat you guys tomorrow sometime stay safe out there guys have a good night